Good morning, all. Uh, I'm Babesh Dada, I'm an extension vegetable specialist uh, with UGA Tifton. Before I start, I have a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce our new extension vegetable and cotton nematologist, Dr. Intiaz Chaudhary. He comes from NC State and has joined uh, our department in uh, la last fall. So he'll be working very closely with our agents and stakeholders. So welcome, Intiaz. Uh, one more thing, whatever data which I'm going to show today and some of the synopsis of some of the trials which I'm going to, I'm going to explain, I'm going to share with you, it's all funded or partly funded by Georgia Fruit and Vegetable Commissions, our, by our industry cooperators, and also some of the uh, projects are by USDA NIFA. So I'm, I'm right, this is the right platform to acknowledge those three, those three platforms. All right. To start with, we'll start with a disease and a problem which has become endemic, and it's a pretty big problem in watermelon production in Georgia. It's a fusarium wilt. It's a soil-borne disease caused by fusarium oxysporum formus specialis nevium, or in short, fawn. This, the problem with this particular pathogen is, the, is this. Once you get in your field, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays there. And uh, the chemical management and other things are very, very difficult with this particular pathogen. So we, with respect to chemical management, and since this is a fungicide update session, I'm going to talk about, so focus only on fungicides. I'm not going to talk on other things like chemical cultural practices or, 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 or uh, your graftings and so forth. For this, for that particular aspect, I'll be giving a talk along with Dr. David Langson tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. So it's will primarily primarily on watermelon fusarium and anthracnose. So today, uh, fusarium and chemical management, as you all know, the only one chemistry that works and been using is uh, prothiaconazole or proline. That too you have to use early on. You have to use right at transplanting. If you miss that window, you're not able to protect your crop. Now, but there's a limitation with that, that particular fungicide too. It can do so much under certain, under heavy infestation, proline also fail. So what me and uh, along with our industry cooperators, specific, specifically Syngenta, we've been trying to see what other options we can have. So uh, lately we've been uh, dabbling with uh, Mervis Prime, which is a uh, labeled fungicide uh, for especially uh, on watermelon uh, for gummy stem blight and, and anthracnose and others, but it's not labeled for soil use. It's not labeled for fusarium. So we've been trying to see if Mervis Prime has any kind of efficacy with, uh, with respect to fusarium. So what, look at this trial. In this trial, we tried this particular treatment in a program, treatment one, where we had proline as a grower standard, where pro proline was applied at plant soil range with 5.7 ounce per acre. And then we came back, came back with Mervis Prime, two shots a, a week after first application of proline and subsequent application of Mervis Prime was done 10 days after first Mervis Prime application. So the scheme was proline at transplanting, a week later Mervis Prime, a week later, one more shot of Mervis Prime. That is our program. So when we did that, our uh, uh, fusarium wilt incidence dropped significantly compared to the non-treated check. So non-treated check, we have nearly 26% disease, where this particular program, we had 11.2. So this particular trial was done at the station, so we can do some off-level stuff. So treatment two is off-level strictly off-level. So here we started with Mervis Prime pre-plant soil band application. What does it mean? Before we planted, we had a six inch banded spray on top of those transplant holes. Then after a day, we came back and we transplanted our watermelon seedlings. And then we had proline at soil plant range twice. So we had a soil range of proline, one at transplanting and another application a week after transplanting. So this particular treatment is off-label, but we use it to see how does it, how, does it make any difference if you start with proline, uh, sorry, or start with Mervis Prime. In fact, it didn't. So treatment two was as good as treatment one. 
So, but overall gist of this particular trial is that, yes, Mirvis Prime has a role to play, or Mirvis has a role to play in soil application against fusarium wilt. Now, if, is this particular chemistry going to be registered for soil use? Well, not Mirvis Prime, but Mirvis, pure Mirvis, going to get a soil use and it's forthcoming. We do not know when, but it's going to be a new tool for our watermelon growers against fusarium. Now, question is, let's say, so until it gets uh, registered, what are our options? What, what can we do? So this is what we are recommending. So we are recommending go with proline application at plant at what we, we've been doing with a labeled, <coughs> labeled rate, and then come back with Mirvis Prime with 11.4 ounce rate, and it can be used as a high volume spray um, with 50, at least 50 to 60 gallons of water per acre. And then you can do subsequent application a week after. Now, here is the, this is the disclaimer. Do not inject Mirvis Prime through drip, or do not use Mirvis Prime in the soil because it's not yet labeled, it's not labeled. Do not do, do, not do bed spray with Mirvis Prime, it's not labeled. Okay? Moving on, what else? So we have a, uh, the BSF has a new chemistry called Sevia. Sevia is a group three fungicide as proline. Okay, so we wanted to see can Sevia has, uh, Sevia has any efficacy against proline, uh, against uh, fusarium wilt? And we compared proline and Sevia parallelly, alone, or also in a program. So look at this particular trial where we looked, we used proline at plant soil range as a grower standard compared with Sevia at plant soil range. And look at the untreated check. So with untreated check, it was a very it, it was a very hot trial because we inoculated this trial twice. And we had nearly 100, nearly 94% of the plants were dead in untreated check. But look at Sevia and Proline. It significantly reduced the uh, fusion wilt incidence. Now, Proline and Mirvis Prime, and Mirvis Prime is, is, this, is, the treat, is the program treatment that I showed you earlier. The particular treatment, uh, program treatment also reduced it. And Sevia, what we did in the fourth treatment, the fourth treatment where we used, where we replaced proline with Sevia and uh, come back with Mervis Prime twice. So overall, there's no significant difference. All of these programs alone or in combination with Sevia and proline and with Mervis Prime can significantly reduce fusarium wilt incidence. Now, is Sevia labeled on watermelon for fusarium? No, not yet. This is only the first season when we tried Sevia against Fusarium. And what, I'm, what we are showing is that there is a promise with Sevia. So it, we have to see how consistent it is and how it's going to last in multi-location field trials. Moving on, another disease which is getting importance is anthracnose. So since 2018, we have seen increasing trend of anthracnose in diverse cucurbit crops specifically in cucumber, cantaloupe, squash, and watermelon. So these are the typical symptoms of anthracnose. This is a symptom of anthracnose on watermelon. It can cause foliar symptoms, but it can also cause fruit symptoms. So fruit symptoms are quite problematic because if you miss the fruit symptom and you, and you harvest these fruits and you ship those fruits in a bin, during the shipment, it can show up and your entire shipment can get rejected. So it has the same level of post-harvest, uh, uh, I would say, caveats uh, as of phytophthora capsici. So it's a pretty, pretty bad disease. So this particular slide is from my postdoc, Dr. Kuhn. Um, and uh, what she did, she looked at the anthracnose from different cucurbit crops. What she found, the, the anthracnose isolates that were isolated from watermelon were associated with the watermelon, they grouped together, where the anthracnose isolates were isolated from cucumber and cantaloupes, they grouped separately from the watermelon. So it seems like there might be a host association or host specificity with respect to anthracnose, what we see in, cucur in, in watermelon versus cucumber and squash, and uh, cucumber and cantaloupe. All right, so we did, we did a trial in 2022, and we looked at all different chemistries which are labeled, and a couple of them are not, not labeled on <coughs> and anthracnose. What we found, proline and topsin are our top performance against anthracnose. 
followed by Luna Experience, Marivon, uh, Mirvis Parma, Provia Top. So they are moderately effective. Bravo also has some efficacy. The one important thing which I want to show here, Quadris. Quadris has been our mainstay fungicide to control anthracnose. Look at Quadris. Quadris has lost its efficacy. And we have some lab evidence that there might be uh, resistance issues with Quadris in controlling anthracnose. So Quadris is not working. That's why we are seeing increasing trend of anthracnose for the last three or four years. So what, what do we learn from these particular tables? Is this means that some of the chemistries that, has, uh, that, are, uh, uh, that are effective, highly effective, or moderately effective, you can use them in rotation. And good thing with all this, some of these chemistries are that these particular chemistries can also work against uh, powderies, gummies, and have a wide range of activities. So that's good. There's one more thing which I want to bring to your notice that last year, actually 2021, we tried to see can we tank mix microthal sulfur, which is a very cheap compound. I think it's a dollar a pound or two dollars a pound, okay? But it has been shown to have a good bit of efficacy against foliar fungi, foliar true fungi. So in 2021, what we did, we tried to look at tank mixing microthal sulfur with proline or with topsin or with quadris or with Inspire Super and try to see if, the, if this particular tank, mix, tank mixing can increase the efficacy compared to the solo application of, of those hard hitters. We found that it's not, it's, uh, the, the, the boost is not generalized. generalized. It is, we saw the boost or additive effect only with proline. So when, what does it mean? It means if you, when we use proline alone and compared with proline with microthal sulfur, we saw a significant reduction with the latter compared to the former. So you can see here with proline we had, where is the cursor? Yeah, with proline we had significant reduction uh, of, uh, of disease over here, when, but when we use proline with microthal sulfur as, as a tank mix, the, the disease incidence or AUDPC was significantly reduced. So we saw a synergistic effect. In 2022, we saw the consistency of this particular treatment and it was consistent. So we had proline and we have proline with microthal sulfur. Look at when we use proline with microthal sulfur, it significantly reduced anthracnose compared to proline alone. So there might be a benefit if you want to tank mix something, I would tank mix microthal sulfur. All right, phytophthoracapsis. This is this particular trial was done by uh, uh, our county agent in Brooks County. Uh, Ms. Mihasha Dowdy, and she looked at actually three different programs. So, you know, uh, Phytophthora capsicea and Phytophthora fruit rot, in spe specifically melon, is a fruit issue. We saw fruit symptoms. We don't, or we seldom see uh, wine, <coughs> wine decline or wine diseases. So we want to, so the question is, when we should initiate our fungicide program for Phytophthora capsicea? Should we initiate, usually growers usually initiate the program right at fruit set. So we asked the question, can we initiate right at wine run with the same program and can we get a good bit of efficacy if we initiate at a wine run and prolong until fruit set or beyond compared to the fruit set initiation, is there any difference? We saw there's no difference. You can you still be good and still be protecting your fruits if you use these particular, these, these particular combinations of fungicides, but you have to start, you can start at uh, fruit set. You don't have to start at the vine run. Now, what are the fungicides which are effective? So, in all these three combinations, we saw Presidio, Orondis, and Illumin. They are very good, they are moderately effective fungicides. Uh, but we also had some data, and we have shown repeatedly that if you tank mix these, with phosphides, like K-phyte, you can get a little boost against Phytophthora. Now, the problem with Phytophthora capsules is fruit rot, as we know. It is a weather-driven disease. If you have continuous rainfall, day after days after days, none of these things gonna work. Okay, so what I'm showing you, the data under ideal conditions where you don't get enough rain. So what did we learn from this? That 
growers are good to go with the, with the initiation of the Fundsel program for Fataftura at fruit set. They don't have to start at vine run. And second, these things may not work if you have repeated rainfall. All right, gummy stem blight, our old friend. So we we'll looked at the efficacy of these, all these registered products against gummy stem blight, and all of them are doing good. But one thing which I want to bring to your attention is a new chemistry. It's, sorry, it's been there, but it's a chemistry called Luna Flex. So Luna Flex is a, a premix of fluopyram, a Luna, with Daphne, Daphne Econazole. And uh, Luna Flex is what we have shown, that Luna Flex is as good as Luna Experience. Okay, so Luna Experience, again, group seven and group 12, so they are pretty good. Inspire Super Approvia top are also good, okay? So you can see, uh, if, you, if you ask me to categorize these based on the efficacy, I would put uh, Luna Flex, Luna Experience, Approvia top, Inspire Super, and Maribus Prime are the top hitters against gummy stem blight. But here's another thing, a Bravo. Our good old friend Bravo is also good, okay? If we, what we recommend under ideal conditions, you can just stay with Bravo until fruit set. You don't have to spend money on the heavy hitters. If the conditions are perfect, you don't get rain, often if the conditions are not humid, in those cases, you can stay with Bravo until fruit set, and then you can start with heavy hitters against gummy. We do not recommend you to go ahead and start with the heavy hitters. So yes, Bravo is good until fruit set, then you can uh, uh, move on to uh, uh, heavy hitter chemistry, heavy chemistries. Okay, I'm gonna switch gears from cucurbits to Brassicas. So in Brassica, apart from uh, black rot, which is a bacterial disease, the another huge concern is uh, alternia, alternaria, leaf, leaf spot or leaf blight and head rot. This particular pathogen has been a problem in all Brassica, specifically in broccoli and leafy greens since 2015. This those who have seen this particular disease, you can see this is, this is characterized by these big lesions, concentrating lesions on, the, on this foliage. Uh, these symptoms or lesions starts from the lower foliage, then that moves up, which moves upward. And when it gets on the heads, heads are very susceptible. Once you, once you have these heads, get on the heads, there it will rot the head over a period of time. All right, so we looked at different conventional fungicides against uh, uh, altern alternaria, and most of them are label products. So what we found that uh, final disease severity on foliage and, f and head rot, some head rot, head rot percentage sometimes do not correlate. For example, if a fungicide which is effective on foliage may or may not have efficacy, have same level of efficacy on head. So you have to be a little mindful of using different combinations of fungicides and different premixes, considering the symptoms on different tissues or different plant parts in broccoli. All right, let's move on to, let's look at what are the things which are effective. The things which are effective are Bravo switch, quadristop, Quadris, which has been failing, but this in my trial, it showed it did fair. Inspire Super, Mervis Prime, Luna Sensation, Preoxor, and Top Guard. It's good news that most of the heavy hitters are still effective in controlling the foliar symptoms. Now, the things which are concerning is this thing, Enduran Fontellus. Enduran Fontellus has been primarily used by our, our growers, both are group sevens, but they are primarily used by our growers to control this disease. But look at the trend. Although they are numerically, num numerically better compared to non-treated check, but they are also not significantly different from the non-treated check in some cases. So with foliar symptoms or foliar severity, you cannot deduce a conclusion. But look at the head rot. These are head rot percentages after harvest. The head rot percentage with Indura is not significantly different from non treated check. In fact, it is almost the same. So we have the plots that were sprayed with Indura had 96% of head rot. And this is surprising. It never happened. This is the first time it happened. Fontelis, 
Although it did good in reducing the head rot, but it's slipping. It's fifth. Look at the disease incident. This is head rot percentage is 50 percent compared to the 97.4 with a non-treated check. But there's a whole, the good news is a whole group of fungicides. Some of them, most of them, are labeled. They were able to reduce the head rot consistently and and significantly compared to other treatments. And some of the examples are Quadristop, Inspire Super, Mervis Prime, Preoxer, and so forth. They are able to reduce the head rot. Now with brassicas, you have to be a little mindful about uh, your PHI's post-harvest interval. Some of them have, may have a seven days of post-harvest interval. So what we're going to recommend is use, some of the, use these in rotation and be mindful of PHI's. Now, if you ask me about Bravo, where the Bravo fits in, Bravo fits in very well in reducing the foliar severity as well as head rot percentage, percent severity. So what we recommend, use these heavy hitters in rotation with the Bravo. So you can start your broccoli, start your broccoli crop, uh, spray Bravo until the head set, and then you can switch. If you see the conditions are very conducive for disease incidence during the foliar stage, you can rely on the heavy hitters. But until that, you are good to go with Bravo. So I'm going to give you some examples. I'm going to show you some pictures how the non-treated checks look. This is the non-treated check. So, so this is the spot, and we scrape. This is the spot on the heads. We scrape the heads. You can see all the infected florets, and so forth. This is our quadristop. Quadristop did okay, but there's some lesions over here. Luna sensation did great. And this is a fontellus. So fontellus is sleeping, as I mentioned in my trial. So that's concerning. We'll keep. We'll keep uh, assessing it. All right, what about software chemistry, organic products, and broccoli? So what we did, we compared, you know, microthyl sulfur is armly labeled. It's a soft chemistry. So we looked at microthyl sulfur. Bravo was our chemical, I mean, a conventional chemical standard check. Then we had OSOs at two different rates, higher rate and lower rate. We have lifeguard. We had coside 3000O. 3000O is armly labeled but not 3,000. Howler and T are the other two software chemistries. All right, I will go, I will, I will talk only about the head rot percentages. I will talk about things that did not work. The things that did not work are lifeguard did not work, COSA did not work, Howler didn't work, TIA didn't work. Their head rot percentages were not significantly different from the non treated check. Now, what worked? Well, Bravo, of course. Bravo is our standard conventional chemistry. But things that work is OSO, irrespective of the rate, higher rate or lower rate, it had a, it, this, uh, the head rot percentage were not significantly different. Look at microthyl sulfur. Microthyl sulfur can significantly reduce the head rot percentage compared to non treated check and compared to other software chemistries. And this is a very cheap product. This is second year in a row where microthyl sulfur was able to reduce the head rot percentage of alternaria in broccoli. All right, moving to our next crop, onion. Onion is our biggest vegetable crop. So what do we see in onion? Well, botrytis leaf blight was widespread last past season, but it was moderately severe in 2022. If you are aware with the botrytis, how it, how it looks on the leaves, it produces ghost spots. You see this, we call it ghost spots. Despite these ghost spots, it is very, very difficult for, for us to isolate botrytis from them. Now, what follows botrytis? Once you have botrytis infection, if you do not control botrytis, you will have stem filium. Now, stem filium can be a very problematic and headache for the ending growers. But anyway, so the deal is, if you control botrytis, you will, you will end up controlling stem filium. Okay. If you don't control botrytis, you will be dealing with not only botrytis, but also with stem filium and other issues. So uh, I looked at the individual efficacy of, uh, uh, sorry, efficacy of individual chemistries, and what I found Roverol, which our mainstay program, very old, old botrytis product, is, it's working. But the efficacy is not as good as some of the heavy hitters like Omegas and tran Luna Tranquilities, Mirivis Prime, Marivon, and Luna Flex. So, uh, Roverol, if you want to use Roverol, use it early in the season, but don't rely on Roverol in, and, and don't expect it to control your disease yeah. later in the season. The one surprise, and it's a consistent surprise, last year in 2021 and 2022, Scala, Another group nine fungicide, it, it worked like a charm 
since 2010, but it's, but it's lost its efficacy in, since 2021. So consistently 2021, 22 seasons, Scala did not work. Now one more thing is that BS, uh, sorry, um, Bayer is thinking of uh, uh, um, using Luna Flex or, uh, in comparison to uh, Luna Tranquility. Luna Tranquility is a very important product. So Luna Flex is again uh, Luna with diphenoconazole. When we looked at the efficacy, uh, compare the efficacy of Luna Tranquility with Luna Flex, there's no difference. So Luna Flex might, uh, might be coming in, in with respect to uh, uh, Luna Tranquility for our running growers in, in coming seasons. All right, uh, we also looked at Sevia. So we compared Luna Tranquility and Sevia program, Luna Tranquility with Inspire Super, Marivon Sevia and Marivon Inspire Super. There's no difference in, with respect to their, uh, their efficacy in reducing botrytis leaf blight. So, so what I'm showing here that Yes, Sevia, which is a, a group three product, can be rotated if it, la if it gets labeled. It's not yet labeled. If it gets labeled, it can be rotated and can, can, can replace Inspire Super and in the long run. All right, this is the, I also do ranking of the fungicides. So this ranking is based on five years of fungicide trials. So this is the ranking for botrytis leaf blight against, and, and, and what, we've, what you can see here, omega 500 is a top hitter. Okay, it's, it has a high to moderate level of efficacy, followed by Marivis Prime, Luna Tranquility, Luna Flex, uh, Inspire, and Inspire Super, and Fontelis and Marivon. Some of the lower tier products are like uh, Roverall, Pristine, Switch, Quadris, and Quadris Drop. So what does it mean? If, you, if the grower wants to use it, use it early in the season, don't use it later on. Scala. No efficacy. So fungicide ranking for stemphilium, uh, it follows a similar trend. The only caveat is last two products. Omega 500 and Scala do not work on Luna Tranquility. So Omega 500 works only for botrytis, but not for stemphilium. So if you have, if you want to control stemphilium, you have to control botrytis. So I would rather use Omega 500 to control botrytis to control stemphilium later on. So moving on from onions to bell peppers. So we have anthracnose. So anthracnose is also increasing, as is an increasing trend in bell peppers too. So did a fungicide trial past season. We looked at efficacy of different uh, individual fungicides. Some are, most of them are labeled. So what I found that uh, uh, the, the fungicide like Top Guard, Mirvis Prime, Switch, and Minspasuba doesn't have any efficacy in bell pepper anthracnose. Whereas our stay, uh, uh, main, pro, main products like Quadris, it's still efficacious. So if you remember, Quadris is not, not working against cucurbit anthracnose, but still has efficacy on, on uh, uh, pepper anthracnose. But if I were the grower, I would use it early in the season, but I would won't rely on Quadris later on. Uh, Aproviatop is pretty good. Aproviatop significantly reduced. In our trial, I think it's, it was the best treatment in controlling pepper uh, anthracnose. Bravo. Yes, Bravo also has efficacy in reducing pepper anthracnose. Powdery mildew. So I'll, in powdery mildew, our two top hitters, Gatton and Vivando, are still performing great. So you can look at Vivando and Gatton. This is Gatton, this is Vivando. They significantly reduce the powdery mildew compared to all other treatments. Some of the softer products like Ninja, uh, it has an efficacy, but this is only first year of trial. So uh, I, looked, I would like to see its consistency. But if it's consistent, it will be good news for our organic growers. They can use Ninja. Uh, Prolevo is another fungicide, which is a, a hard chemistry, but it, is, it, has a, uh, it, is, it has been consistently performing. It is not, a good, not as good as Garten Vivando, but it's somewhere at the middle tier program. Quintech is OK. Lunaflex. Lunaflex also has some efficacy against uh, powder mildew. Well, with this, I'd like to conclude and thank you all for listening to all the fungicides. But if you have questions on different commodity or different fungicides, I'll be happy to answer. I'll be here for the next two days. So hunt me down. Thank you all. Any questions for Dr. Babesh real quick? Questions.
All right, you guys are all soaked in all the fungicides. <laughs> so it's good, fun information. Thank you.